Not bad, huh? this series on the history of running and running shoes. To recap, we wouldn't have running shoes if we didn't have running. Before 1960, running was done on the track, intervals every day, and it was hard. And run runners either broke down because of injury or they flourished. In 1960, at the Rome Olympics, we discovered a coach in the little country of New Zealand. His name was Arthur Lydiard. And he would have his runners go off the track and run on beaches and roads and trails and do lots of miles at a relatively easy pace. And that's something that we could do that's what it was discovered. Discovered people like us were doing it in New Zealand. And from that moment on, running became something that everyone could do. And that's where running shoes were born. Today we're gonna cover 1971 to 1978. That seems to be a, a, a very important time frame. The timeline, the timeline that I'm sharing is what I think are the important things that happened during that time frame. Everybody, all the big brands had shoes out. Saucony, Asics, Tiger, Brooks, New Balance, Nike, all had shoes out. But there were special products that came out during this time and special things that happened in running that changed the history of running. In 1971, Runner's World did a survey of their readers. The responses came in and it was eye-opening. 85% of the respondents were male, 15% female. The average age was 29. The average weight was 145. So think about that. 145 pound runners is what the brands were looking at to make their shoes. They ran a lot of miles. Their average was 50 miles a week. They identified 66 bottles of shoes and 32 running shoe brands. Think about that. We, we weren't even in, the running shoes really hadn't been defined and they had 32 running shoe brands that they identified. I don't think it's happenstance that today, in the work that I do, for the brands themselves, almost every single time I do the work, there are 32 running shoe brands. The other really important point, and it shows that Phil Knight and his team at Blue Ribbon Sports were actually doing a phenomenal job of putting running shoes on the feet of runners, 60% of the runners said they ran in Tiger. That's phenomenal. But in 1962, some things happened that were gonna change that relationship between Knight and Anatsuka Tiger. Some folks from Anatsuka Tiger came to the US to tour to see what was happening. And they walked into Blue Urban Sports in Los Angeles, and what did they see? They saw Nike shoes. History says that Bowerman and Knight created Nike while at the same time were selling Tiger shoes and, and launched the brand underneath, using the, the money that they were making from Tiger launched this brand Nike. 
Well, it's obvious what happened. Tiger wasn't really happy through whatever means they could. They parted ways. Knight, Knight and Bowerman and Blue Ribbon Sports started to be Nike only, and Tiger went their own way. At that same time, Bowerman was always tinkering with shoes for his athletes. And the story is one day he's in the kitchen having waffles for breakfast and he realizes the waffle iron, that's gonna be the perfect, if we just turn it inside out, we'll get the, the outer sole that we need. And so he started molding outer soles that mimic the waffle iron and eventually in 1974 so two years later the waffle trainer is released by Nike and it's the second running shoe that they've created two other things that happened in 1972 the first and probably the most important thing to running and I mentioned this last week, Frank Shorter wins the Olympic Marathon in Munich. Millions of people saw it on TV. People were inspired to get off the couch and start running. Second thing, and it's super important to today's world of running shoes, Jim Davis, who is the owner of New Balance, purchased New Balance in 1972. That waffle trainer that came out in 1973 had something that the brands had been working on. They knew that if they added more cushioning to a shoe, runners could run more comfortably when they got off the track. And so the waffle trainer, they, they had been using rubber, just thicker rubber as the cushioning system. And that waffle trainer came out and it had a, a, a different foam. And in this case, it was polyurethane. But in 1974, Jerry Turner, who was at Brooks, gets a call from Marty LaCourie, who's one of the best runners in the country. And Marty is talking about this new foam that would work to soften the blow. And it was light. And it came from this factory in Baltimore. So Jerry goes to the factory, and what he discovers is ethyl vinyl acetate, or EVA which is the predominant foam used today in running shoes. But in, at this time, it was done in sheets. So you, you, could, you could get the softness or the weight that you wanted. It would come out in this big sheet and you'd cut it out, almost like you cut out cookies. And you'd cut it out in the shape of your midsole and that became the cushioning base of your running shoes. 1975, Brooks launches the Villanova, the first running shoe with this new lightweight EVA foam. Nineteen seventy six comes around and two things happened in running that were pretty big. Frank Shorter does it again. He goes to Montreal and takes silver in the Olympic marathon. And then in New York City, the first version of what we now know as the New York City Marathon that goes through five boroughs happened and 2,000 people ran in that race. With all these new runners, new injuries started to show up. It wasn't just stress fractures because stress fractures occur from excessive stress. New injuries started to show up and a podiatrist started to research it. And in 1977, Dr. Stephen Under, a podiatrist came out with a book called Cures for Common Running Injuries. And in that book, he talked about what the foot does when running. And he talked about pronation. He talked about over pronation and he talked about under pronation. Jerry Turner at Brooks was fascinated by this. And so he met with, with under and developed the first 
ever stability trainer. And in 1978, Brooks released the Vantage. So again, two things that Brooks brought to running that are still used today. And in fact, if you look at the number one stability shoe on the market, the Brooks Adrenaline, it's actually a descendant of the Vantage. And if you think about EVA, we've got lots of new foam out there. We've got all kinds, we have P-backs, we've got polyurethane pellets, like in Boost or the React foam. But the majority of running shoes are still made with ethyl vinyl acetate or EVA. Some other things that happened in 1978 that are really important to the running community and actually to, to my life, but Nike, after a couple of years of testing, releases the Tailwind. And the Tailwind is unique because it has an air sole embedded into the midsole. So we have polyurethane that came out with the tailwind and now all of a sudden we're putting a pocket of air between that and that was revolutionary. Now that tailwind actually was a failure. The air sole units popped frequently but what it showed is what Nike could do and Nike Air became synonymous you, you didn't say Nike without saying Air. That same year, 4,700 runners finished the Boston Marathon. That's five times greater than it was in 1970. So the running boom was in full force. Running events were growing. And then on the island of Oahu, 15 guys got together and they swam the Waikiki Rough Rock Water Swim. They then got on their bikes and rode around the island. Then they got off their bikes and ran a marathon. And at the end, the winner got a trophy that was called the Ironman. So think about all of this. Running has just, has really just begun to, to take hold 4,000 people are running the Boston Marathon, and then these crazy guys say, let's go take it one step further. All happening at this one time. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoy this. When you're out there running this week, one thing that I found through all of my running, but specifically during this time of COVID, is make, take extra time and give other runners even people, cyclists, or people even walking. Give them a smile. Wave hello. It will go a long way to make your day better and it will surely make their day better. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a great week of running. Talk to you next week.